Good morning from the Central Sierra Mountains. Camp was amazing. And there's the sunrise. Not a bad way to get up. If you're new here, uh, my name is Mike and I do travel and adventure videos. And this is the last season finale of season one of my epic cross country adventure from California to Georgia and back to California. And I wanna use this video while we're up here in the Sierras to talk about what I learned on that trip, what worked, what didn't work, what changes I'm going to make to the truck. And in fact, as of this video, you can probably see the beast looks a little bit different. So let's talk about it. Let's go. So the first order of business after returning home, I headed to Top Shop Auto. What did what? So what did you discover? Anything? From we, the trip? We discovered nothing from the trip. Okay, so good. You I did nothing to the truck. Nothing happened. But <laughs> we decided to add to it. Yeah. All right. I see I still have some Utah. That's pretty good. Yeah. But these are not just the uh, the sliders I ordered. You did some really... We did. Now we're safe. All right. Anyway, these sliders uh, had no frame mount at all. We put some stability here to the frame from here to here. And then on the Raptor, this is a special frame for the Raptor. We did not want to drill or weld it right. at all. If we started looking at it and it's a, it's a thin, flexible frame. Mm -hmm. And that's why they put all these holes everywhere. So you've got lots of options. Yeah. If this isn't enough support, we'll bolt into some of the holes over there and make it, make another one. But this is where I think most of the weight could happen. In the center. Yeah, basically. on this thing. And then we've made this stop here so that it can't, it's in the tube and then it can't go any farther in. Okay. And then it's loaded to the bar, but yeah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. So this, this is a, a special battle stop made from used coolant hose. That's what that's from. All right. We slide it over there. That's something we do it's on the truck. It's a very special, expensive part. Very part expensive there. part. <laughs> you can only get it at Top Shop Auto. Custom. custom. And then your, your Fox shocks look amazing. Ford does use Fox equipment on the yeah. Raptors and there's no leaks and everything looks great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah the, the, the leaf springs, man, this thing, I mean, obviously I went from California to Georgia and back yeah, yeah. and off road half the way. Yeah. It rode like a dream. It's solid. It's rode solid. like a dream. This is great. Just in case you're wondering why rock sliders, well, stay tuned. Okay, before I get into everything that I've changed since being back from this trip, I do want to do a quick shout out to the people that helped me along the way and made this possible. My friend Michael and Corey, my best friends over at Overland Bound, without you and your support, none of this trip would have been possible. And the people over at Wagon Tech, this lithium cube battery, the most amazing thing. It kept everything charged, everything running, all the camera equipment that even enabled this to work. Full disclosure, they gave me a free cube, but I would have bought it anyway. It's that good. So I highly recommend it. Thank you for your support. Also, my good friends over at Off Roam, who supplied me with all the mounts for my trip. Thank you guys over at Off Roam. You made this trip enjoyable because I didn't have to worry about constantly uh, tightening and, and trying to figure out how to get my iPhone to stay on my dash without bouncing off on all these trails. All right, so on this whole trip and this journey, what worked, what didn't work, and what improvements would I make? Well, let's talk about what worked first. I spent about six, maybe eight months doing shakedown trips. And that was so important to my long journey across the country because as I encountered different terrain and different weather, I was able to adjust and remember on my shakedown trips what I had seen, what I had experienced, where I'd taken my truck. I actually hit trails that I probably wouldn't have hit had I not did complicated shakedown trips. So for instance, there's a trail near Lake Alpine called Slick Rock Trail. I took the Raptor on that trail. So I'm 
spotting my good buddy, Mike, and uh, he's got a Raptor. I love this trail. Um, we hemmed and hot coming to this campsite because Raptor is just a little too wide for this trail. So I'm going to spot him coming up and uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's go. I think we're finally going to get rid of those uh, steps on the side of his truck. He's in a Raptor. It's too wide for this truck. And driver. You're good. You're fine. Nice and slow. Home. Come on up nice and easy as you turn driver. Driver a little bit. Okay, driver a lot. Hold right there. Let me take a look. There goes that step. <laughs> Quarter of the trail, but that was probably the extreme limit of what that truck would do, and I definitely wouldn't do that trail alone. So because of Slick Rock, once I got to Arizona, and I got off on that goat trail that was very complicated, I knew the limits of my truck. And I think it saved my truck. If I had not done that trail, I probably would have approached Arizona very differently, been more nervous and perhaps broke the Raptor or got into more trouble than I should have. Look, at the end of the day, if I encountered anything I was uncomfortable with, I stopped, I turned around, I didn't do it. Um, but also camping in different uh, weather right there is one of the first places I camped in the Raptor. I didn't even have a tent. I was in the back of the truck sleeping it was 25 degrees in the snow because it's about 32 degrees outside going on 25. what worked really well for this trip was that i had the perfect weather never touched my winter equipment uh maybe once uh at bryce canyon but that was early in the morning for coffee and within an hour just like today um it's brilliant once the sun comes out it changes the temperature by like 10 degrees that time frame that I took the trip going across the country, other than the few hurricanes I had to go around in the south, it was quite amazing. So I'd say that worked really well for this trip. So next, let's talk about all the planning that I did for this trip. Now, spoiler alert, in the end, the planning was helpful for a different reason than you may think. All right, for this segment, I'm here in my home office. I'm here because this is the easiest place to answer the number one question that I received on all my videos. And that is, Mike, how did you plan this cross country trip? And what software did you use? What tools did you use? How did you find the trails and the campsites? So I'm gonna try to make this super easy and super quick and just explain the process I used in more detail. I knew that from day one, I wanted to go from California to Atlanta to see family and from Atlanta back to California. I'm a subscriber and a user of The Dirt. At The Dirt's website, I can put in a trip plan and go from San Francisco to Atlanta. I can tell it I'm gonna go through Moab, I wanna go through Denver, Colorado. I tell it I wanna drive only six hours uh, a day. Sometimes that'll be plus or minus, and it'll give me uh, basically campsites and places where I can go 
uh, and stay with my truck. Now, this is why it's the backup to the backup plan, okay? Um, it gives me KOAs and it gives me RV parks or campgrounds. Now, I can find dispersed sites with this. Um, they're not always up to date and it doesn't give me everything I want to know. However, what it does do is put points of interest where, uh, where I need to make stops. It helps me find gas stations along the way because I can also plug in the fact that I get 15 miles to the gallon on average with the Raptor and it will take me routes that will ensure that I have gasoline along the way. That was my basic plan, but none of this mattered. The minute I hit the road, everything fell apart. There were forest fires all up and down the coast of California, which was sending smoke across essentially all of Southern California, Northern California, and portions of Nevada. And so right away, I immediately ended up straight into Utah on day one, and that was supposed to be day two. Nothing that I planned, nothing that I mapped out before I left is the routes that I took. If I do this trip again, I won't do so much planning. I'm going to figure out where the first two stops along the way are going to be, and I'm just going to take off. Which brings me to how did I find trails, how did I route along the way, and how did I find campsites? First off, it starts with influencers. Other YouTubers, I am a patron for Lifestyle Overland. If you guys know who they are, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go check them out. As a patron, you get access to all of their points of interest and routes that they've taken, and you can download those and use them for personal consumption, which is what I did, as well as Chris Schantz at Venture Forward. But essentially, these people have marked all of their campsites that they've camped at. Because of that, um, there's just a massive amount of information available to you there. So I use alltrails.com. All trails, if you just go to Moab, Utah, there are 269 trails listed in all trails. It'll tell you if it's easy, moderate, or hard. Hard being something like a slick rock trail. Moab can be very dangerous, but it can also be very easy for any one with a stock four-wheel drive. You can download the GPX tracks essentially for free, import them into your GPS system. And trust me, once you go on these trails, there's campsites everywhere. You just look for the fire rings, those are dispersed sites, and you'll find the most epic campsites that you could possibly imagine. I also use trailsoffroad.com. Again, do a search in Georgia. There's tons of trails uh, that are available around Georgia. You can just download them, put them right into your navigation system. You're off to the races. Overland Trail Guides. Um, this is a paid site. I do pay for it. Um, I don't share these trails, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't share these trails. I pay for these trails. Because of that, you're not able to share that. It's a licensing issue. Uh, but almost every state has GPX tracks from Overland Trail Guides. So California, tons of these things. If you want to go to the desert, you want to go Anza Borrego, Tahoe, Mendocino Counties, Grand Circuit, Joshua Tree. All the GPX files are here. Now, again, this is a paid site, but well worth it in my opinion. I also use backcountry discovery routes. This might be the most amazing thing you've ever seen. RideBDR.com is essentially mapping all the backcountry discovery routes state by state in the United States. So they don't have all the states yet, but they're working on that. And this is 100% free. If you don't do anything else, go do this, because this is the best way to get started state to state to state and find off-road trails that cross multiple states and that will lead you on an adventure of a lifetime. So once I got all my GPX tracks imported into my iPad that is mounted on the dash of the Raptor, then uh, I easily navigated off-road and found uh, campsites all over the place. For now, Let's go back out to the Sierras and talk about the things that I've added since I got back.
since I got back, which has been about 30 days now, um, we've added some things. So we talked about at Expo West, the uh, rigid uh, tire carrier and swing out. So I've added that along with the uh, table. This has been an amazing space saver since all my kitchen and everything is on the back of the truck. So now I can put things over here. I have this full area now to work with. Prior to that, I had this last US bag company trash bag strapped to my tailgate, which was convenient, but most of the time not convenient because the straps went over uh, the top of the surface, which made this really wobbly and, and hard to deal with. Also, the trash was always underneath, so I couldn't actually use it um, until I shut the tailgate. So now it's back up on the tire. The spare tire is up here, very important. I got it out from underneath, and if I do get stuck and I do bust a tire, it's now easy to get to my spare tire, get it off and get it back on the truck and get back on the train. That said, I ordered it back in May of this year, and I've been waiting almost eight months now for this to arrive, and that is my Gobi rack. So now with the Gobi rack, I'm gonna be adding some thin cases to the top where I'll take all that stuff in the back that I don't need while I'm on the road and driving and get up on top of that rack into those cases. One of the most striking changes to the entire truck, both visual and otherwise, it's the new Roof Nest Falcon Pro. Just gave it the shakedown last night here in the Sierras, slept in it. It was so comfortable. The mattress is amazing. It's a true memory foam mattress. Um, I put a queen size flannel sheet on top of it that kept the warmth. I think that actually is going to effectively replace my um, XPED blow up mattresses. Um, it's not R rated of course, but I think based on the experience I've had with those, this is a good upgrade. With this guy, it takes about 30 seconds to deploy. I can keep all my sleeping gear in the tent. So when I close it down, it's always there. When I open it up, I pop it up, I pull the skylight open, I'm done, it's over. So I'm really enjoying that aspect uh, of this tent. <music>
This concludes Season 1, but don't worry, in a few months we're headed to the Pacific Northwest to kick off Season 2. In the meantime, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, it helps me immensely, and until next season, bye-bye.